Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to part three of this series where I'm creating a monster Venus flytrap from hell. So we got this far with it. We did the bulk modeling in Fusion 360. Then we took it into Blender and we remeshed it. We did a little bit of mushing around here on the, the body of it. We, what else did we do in Blender? We assigned um, our UV maps, or created our UV maps, and we also assigned material slots to the different bodies. So we are good to go. So if you look over here, um, we'll go to look at our material maps. So now we have our, you can see the, the maps for each of these things, left, right, Stem, teeth left, teeth right. And incidentally, you can actually paint um, directly on to the maps. Like so. Or you can paint here and they show up on the maps. So pretty cool, right? <clears throat> Um, but the neat thing is, like I said before, I have it on body left, and I'm painting on the body left, but it won't paint on, oops, it won't paint on anything else. It's painting on the inside here, but it isn't painting on any, any other part. So that's, uh, pretty cool, right? Okay. Let's just, uh... Let's just get rid of that layer. Okay, so we're going to get painting. We're being a little more professional because we got our separate groups now, which is great. Let's do body right. We're even going to be more professional than that because the last time we painted things, we used this uh, a paint layer, which you would think you would use, right? Um, the problem with paint layers as opposed to fill layers, if I paint with carbon fiber, right, and then I say, okay, I want another layer, so I add another paint layer, and then I paint with, uh, say, some brass, so that's cool, right? Now, let's say I wanted to change something about the carbon fiber, so I click back on the carbon fiber layer, and I can't really change anything like if I change um, I could like uh, I try to change the base color you know it doesn't matter it's already set to the brass material because it's expecting me to um, spray paint brass so this has nothing to do with the what's down this is what I'm going to paint next there's no memory of what I have down already so if even if I'm in this layer uh, you know, and I, I pick a material or something, it, it paints over this, but it's all part of that same layer and there's no, there's no way for me to modify it after it's done. Once you paint it, it's on there forever and you can, the only thing you can do is either erase or paint over. So the better way I feel 99% of the time is to do it as a fill layer. So with a fill layer, you can add a fill layer and we'll add it, we'll do it with carbon fiber. And you notice I can mess around with my settings here. But you're saying, okay, but you want to, you, you just filled the whole thing. You want to just spray paint part of it, don't you? And you can do that with masks. So I can right click on it and add a black mask, which will block out everything. And now notice I'm painting it, it automatically kind of goes into a brush here, which of course you can change the shape of if you want to. Um, but it automatically goes to a white brush, and that white brush is painting. I'm painting on the mask now. So anything I paint white, the layer is going to show through. So now I can paint just like before with carbon fiber, and it reveals that fill. 
Uh, but the cool thing is I can say add another layer and just for the sake of argument, I'll just do a simple paint layer here and do the brass over top of it just like before. Okay, so it looks like it was before. But I can go back to this carbon fiber fill layer and I can still modify things. So if I want to modify, I should actually click on the material itself. So if I want to change the color of some of it, I can do that. I can replace the whole material altogether with something else. So, you know, that is the benefit of doing it this way. It's, I feel it's far superior than the, the crappy way I did the, the sunflower. So that's the way we'll be proceeding here. It's a little more, just a little more professional, I think. It gives it a little more flexibility, even though this one is actually way simpler than the sunflower. But uh, yeah, so that is, that's what we're doing here. So I'm just gonna delete everything here, delete that. Let's, um, we got body rights. I imported a nice material for us to use called Underwater Biofowl. Sounds lovely, doesn't it? And I could just drop this in here, I believe, and it's gonna do a fill layer for me. So it doesn't look so great right now. But one of the reasons is we don't have our, we're not telling it to do the normal, so we can do the normal. Now it actually adds some, uh, height or apparent height. It's not real height, it's fake height, but it looks it looks like we added some texture here to it. And let me, our scale's one, I think that looks, uh, the other thing we gotta do, you notice we have some weird looking seams. We don't really want that, right? I mean, it looks kind of funky. We kind of see seams, that's no good. So uh, a good cheater way around that is to switch off from UV projection. And again, this is an artifact of me doing a really ugly job of UV unwrapping because I did it automatically. So we can do triplanar projection and it does a much better job of making a nice uniform looking thing. So now we can just play around with our colors a little bit. So let's see our base algae color, main color here. We want to make this a greener thing, I think. Let's pick a nice green. That looks like a nice green. This guy, we want him, we don't want these things to stick out so much. We just want to add some, some flavor. Now I think for the algae roughness, I think we want it to make it a little bit shiny looking here and a little wetness looking. I think that looks pretty cool. Pretty cool. Um, what else can I play around with on this? Scale, rotation, let's just find a different point. I think that looks better. Cool. Just gonna save my progress. So I think that looks good. So we can actually just right click on this and say, copy layers. And we're gonna go over here to the body left and we're gonna just paste them on. So we get the same effect over here. And we can also do the same for our stem. So just like that, we're buzzing right along. So that already looks really nice, I think, right? I mean, that's gonna look, that's gonna look good. I think the stem looks 
Looks good, doesn't look uniform. Got a little bit of a, a seam looking thing, but you're gonna, that's not so bad. We're not even gonna notice it or care. So that's fine. Um, so we're buzzing right along. We'll do the teeth last. So we're just gonna do it. We're just gonna change them to a solid color. So what we wanna do now is actually paint the inside, <clears throat> inside of the mouth, I think. So we'll start with the left hand one. We're actually going to make the right side invisible so we can actually get in here and see and see it. Um, I may even hide our teeth for now. So we want to paint this thing, but we're going to use the smart way of doing it, I think. So we're going to add a fill layer instead. And I think we just want to fill with a color. So we're going to deselect all of this stuff uh, except for just color. All it's, so the only thing we're painting with is color. We're not painting any kind of metallics, roughness, normal, etc. And we're going to change this base color to mm, some nice blood red color like that. So that looks great. But again, we don't want our whole thing that color. We're just want, we just want to kind of do the inside here. So we're going to add a black mask. And now we can paint with some goodness. So I think we want um, Our opacity very, very slight here. Oh. So I'm just kind of building up. <clears throat> uh, I want to do my stem too. Yeah, I want to do the stem too. Um, at the same time. So let me just Copy this layer. Paste the layer. Clear the mask for him. And I'll just do a little bit of him too. <clears throat> Just so that we don't, you know, it kind of blends well when it opens that you're not going to want to see this. So you'll see in, in a minute here. I wonder if I could, I can't, can I do those at the same time? Will it let me? It may possibly let me, I'm not sure. No, I guess not. I guess we got to. Oh, wait, that and the stem. Nah, okay. Too good to be true. That's fine. We're okay with that. I mean, it makes sense because it doesn't know what's what. Okay, so let's just work on the left here for now. And we'll color our stem last. So now we want to just do more, more of this.
Nice. And yeah, that'll work. And we could do a little more aggressive and a smaller brush. And we can, nope, I don't want that small of a brush. And I don't want quite that aggressive. And I could just do a little more violent in the. And then the stem. The only thing you got to remember when you're you're clicking between these things is by default when you click on a layer since it's a fill layer it's expecting you to mess with the material but then you got to actually click on the mask to paint the mask uh, it's just a little a little something you got to remember So that looks cool, I think. Um, just gives us some red when it's opening up. So now we can switch over to our other guy here and do the same business with it. Right side, uh, I guess we can actually copy, copy paste, copy layers, right paste layers we want to clear the mask then we can have some fun again uh, I think if I hold down what is it control shift I believe it's shift right, shift right button. I can move around my um, environment lighting. It's really, it's an IBL. And I can rotate it around if I need to get better lighting on, on my scene here. I will just do this, give it a little bit of red. And then make it a little smaller, a little more hectic. And then kick it up a notch some more. Mm, why are you not working? Why are you doing that? Oh, I gotta fix that on the stem. That's okay. Um, opacity, size, I am on this. Okay, it's just, just wasn't the... Cool, all right. Sweet. So let's do this guy. Click on the stem, click on him. And how do I, I mean, is it considered like an erase function? I guess it would be. I'm okay with a little red showing around the edges back here. That's fine. And when that opens more, opens and closes, it may expose a little more or less, but 
I'm not too worried about it. I can always fix it if I need to later. All right, so I'm liking that. I think that looks good. I'm gonna save. Now for our teeth, let's make them visible again. I'm gonna click on one of our teethies. I'm just gonna add a fill layer to him. Uh, we just need color. <laughs> and we're just going to do, I think, um, like a yellow, like a dingy yellow, something like that. It'll stand out against the red, but kind of still work with the yellow, with the green of the plant. I think that works because you want the teeth to like pop, right? So I think that looks good. I'm just going to copy him and go over to the right, get rid of him, paste the new layer, boop, done. And save. And that, boys and girls, is a, our plant. All painted up, all professional and stuff. So I think that looks good, right? I think that looks cool. I'm very, very happy with it. Looks kind of lumpy. Doesn't look like something we made in a cat other than, I mean, the stem looks a little pole-like, I guess, but it won't look so cr so bad when, uh, when it's posed, obviously. I think that looks good. I'm all right with that. I think that looks good. Okay, I've said it looks good enough, so I've convinced myself. And now we gotta do, we'll just see if we can actually stick this into iClone now. So I'm actually gonna start iClone a loading. And in the meantime, let's, I don't know if this is a necessary step, but I'm just gonna bake these puppies again, just to make sure. Everybody's tasty baked. Probably actually should have done it first, but that's fine. <clears throat> it's disco, man. Okay, all baked. It looks lovely. All right, so now we can just export our stuff, export textures. And so we're gonna send them to Realusion Custom Textures. I already made a folder for it. So we'll select this folder. Our output template is the character creator template provided by Realusion which gives me the right maps in the right format. We want all these guys. And export. So it's yelling that there's, um, it's trying to do a displacement map, but we didn't actually tell Substance to do displacements. So it's exporting it's trying to export a displacement, but we didn't actually create anything for that. But that's fine, because I'm not really going to, although I could, I'm not really going to use a displacement map for this right now. So that's all fine and dandy. I'm going to save this one last time. And I'm going to close Substance once it's done saving. Only because it's a pretty heavy program and I don't want to run, and so is iClone. I don't want to run them at the same time. So I already have that uh, project that I gave you a little glimpse of before with all my parts loaded in. So we're 
we're just going to load that up. I think there it is, and it's just ugly white. So now let me get my maps. I'm on my other monitor here. Um, but I'll actually move it over here so you can see what I'm doing in just a second. So I'm just navigating to where we saved our maps. Real Illusion, Custom Textures. And let me just move this over. So maybe you guys can kind of watch along. Audrey 2. So if I click on this bad boy uh, and go to Materials, you can see we have our different material names. So let's just start from the top. We'll start with the stem. So I can go into the stem and we can chuck on over our, our things. So pink. So there's a diffuse. So that's just a color and it looks pretty poopy. Then we can do our normal map. And hey, it, does, it still looks like nothing, right? Sometimes the map comes in and for whatever reason the strength is set to zero. So we can actually bring up the strength. So it still looks kind of ugly and weird, right? But uh, it's because we have, we could do ambient occlusion, which isn't going to do much to it. But the main thing here we need to do is the roughness. And watch when I put the roughness on, suddenly it will not look any better. There it goes. So now we get that uh, kind of shiny look to it. So let's do body left. Again, our base color looks like poo. Ambient occlusion will do. What that'll do is actually, well, I'll show you the difference between it in a minute. It's a subtle difference in this case. Our normal map. Oh, decided to do it at 100% this time, so that's nice. And then our roughness. And there we go, we get this shiny. So now it's starting to look like a cool thing, right? That looks good. So, yeah, what I was saying with the ambient occlusion, well, I'll actually show you when we get this side done too, because the, the white kind of throws us. So let's do the let's do the body right. Do the body right. So what I was saying with ambient occlusion, see how it kind of looks, it looks dark in here, which you would expect it to because it's this enclosed space. So watch over here, if I delete this map, see how it lightens up? What it does is it, it had calculated, it's like a calculated enclosed shadow map kind of, and it just makes enclosed spaces or where you know, like two parts are very close together um, it kind of embeds those shadows into the folds and creases of, of things that are real close so it just makes things look makes it look a little more realistic um, just another just another way of faking realism basically now we got to just got to do the teethies and we'll be done. So we got left teeths. Not much going on here. We got a base color. 
Command occlusion, our roughness. Actually, our roughness, I may want to delete. Let's see, control Z. Ooh, no, I like that. Kind of becomes a little shiny. So with roughness, it's a solid color and I can either, um, I can actually kind of adjust how rough I want it by adjusting the color of this gray or the, the make it shiny or less shiny. But uh, I don't really want to mess with that. I think, I think that's good the way it is there. So the map that's included, I think that's a good amount of shiny. Our normal map probably won't do anything. It's just flat. But that's fine. I'll bring it in just for laughs. And we don't really need anything else. So let's go over to the TV's right. Nice. Save our project. <clears throat> so that is it, ladies and gentlemen. That's the real time render. Uh oh. Somehow I messed up the alignment of those guys. Oh, I must. Maybe when I was playing with something or another. Uh, nobody panic, nobody panic. If I reset, no, he's bone straight. Weird. Doesn't much matter so much because, you know, as soon as I go to pose this thing, it's going to detach anyway. So, like I was saying before, I could um, hold down shift and click or control. Yeah. Click an anchor point somewhere down here. And then uh, select a place up here and hit W to move it. And I can pose this thing. Which is cool, except of course it would be really super cool if this stayed attached to this. Of course I just detached it, but even when it's attached, quote unquote, it still doesn't work. But, oh well. What are you going to do? Still looks cool though. So even if I take these guys, I'll take both of these and I will do pick parent attached to him. So now they're all part one big happy family. If I move this guy, it'll they'll move together. But even then, when I go to animate it, no worky, unfortunately. Eventually I'll figure out why, but uh, that's okay. So anyway, I'm super happy with this. I think it looks awesome. Totally cool looking. Very cool. Well, guys, um, I'm sure you don't want to have me uh, sit here and say how cool it is for another five minutes. So I will let you go. But that is the end of this plant and uh, possibly I'll do another one. I'm not sure. Uh, I, I mean, I'm definitely doing at least four more for my project, whether or not I record them or not. I'm not sure. I'll probably, they might just be done as like a speed session, a, uh, where I just record it and we'll do it as like a time lapse or something, unless I run into something else interesting. But 
most of the other ones I think are going to be just variations on this idea so there's no real reason to um, to you know rehash the same thing over and over again uh, I don't know where my thing is it tells me what I did to do with this I oh here it is two Calvin cover notes let's see what else I got so um, we got the sunflower and we got the Audrey which we didn't even which we didn't even write down so we got him already and we got something we didn't even do so basically I need Something that shoots wood needles, something that sprays a puff of poisonous powder. I need vines that try to grab onto your ne legs and neck, and something that emits a liquid acid that burns through clothing. So lots of things that like spew or throw things. Um, the vines, you know, I'll probably honestly just. Mm, I might even just use the stem from Audrey and maybe material use a different material on it and that way I already have something I can pose and I, I may scale it differently here and there I might just use that so that's really not a big deal um, I probably the next thing I'm going to attack is this something that sprays uh, poison puff and I'm just picturing this like bulbous thing with a with you know that with a mouth almost like it's got almost like if you took your mouth and you're about you look like you're about ready to like blow something right I want want the plant to kind of look like puff, puffy like it's about to shoot something so that'll probably be the next thing I'll try to model um, I may even just sculpt that in Blender from scratch. That might be kind of neat to do. That sounds like something that we could try out. Um, but yeah, that's it. Another successful night. I hope you guys had a good time watching along. And I'll see you in the next video. Cheers. Guys, 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 wait, 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 wait. I just figured something out. I can get this to work. Check this out, okay? I just unparented... Um, the two halves, so they're all by themselves, right? So here's what I was doing wrong. Pick parent, right? Attach to Audrey, which is the stem. That's fine. Problem is, I didn't actually pick a bone. So I was just picking the thing itself. If I actually click here, I can go down and pick the proper bone, which we want the, the last bone in the chain, basically. And... We want to inherit all this stuff. We do the same for the other side. Pick parent. And we want to go down to the last bone. And now, now, I will probably make a fool of myself, but check this out. I think this will work. Edit animation. We'll just pick a bone. And you pick a bone, any bone. Pick you. Rotate you. Ah, look at that. It's working, kids. How nice is that? That's so cool. Check it out. So now I can do the old do control. I can click up here. I wonder if I can click this guy. And here. And here. Nope. This guy. Here. Yeah. Look at that. I could pose it. How cool is that? That is super cool. Awesome. How awesome is that? I am super happy. This is a completely functional thing now. And I should be able to open and close the mouthies if I just click on the sub part. 
and do rotation. It's going to be a weird, just because of where I have my pivot, it's a little weird, but look at that. <laughs> I am so happy right now. I am so happy. <laughs> That's great. There is a there's a thumbnail picture right there for you. <laughs> That's cool. So I'm gonna like throw in a character. I have uh, Calvin standing beside this or something with this eating his arm or something. So that's that'll be a good thumbnail, but I just wanted to share that with you because I, I thought this was this was great because this is exactly what I wanted. Now I can totally animate this thing, whipping around and biting stuff. <laughs> yes. All right. Cool. Now we can end on a happy note. I'll talk to you guys later. Cheers.